The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the February 17th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. Actually, it's February 16th. I was just getting ahead of myself. But this is the uh, Trader's Edge show, and welcome to it. Um, uh, uh, it's been a great week, I think. We've uh, covered a lot of ground out there. You know, we opened up the week talking about phase transition inside of the NASDAQ 100. Uh, we're going to explore natural gas. Everybody's searching for a bottom, so we'll figure that out, as well as trying to figure out what's going on with these markets. So we'd love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You send me an email, send that off to steve at tfnn.com, and inside that subject heading because you would be amazed and how many emails I get. So if you can put in their radio show question or something, just simply to differentiate that it's a regular email, that would be a wonderful thing. And of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. we got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's off 81 points. S&P's down 8. NASDAQ 185. Russell's off 20. To the upside, you've got the semis. are up 6 points. And the New York Stock Exchange up 15. Trannies are down 127. So a mixed bag for sure. Gold's up 6 bucks. With silver being up 32 pennies. That's 1 and 4 tenths percent there. Lights recruit is flat. Natural gas is up 2 cents. The 30-year Treasury printed out at 118.05. Now our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside, you got microcloud hollow. Hologram up 47 bucks, 152 percent. I think that is a hologram. If we take a look at Eli Lilly, it's up 32 bucks or 4 percent. Shockwave Medical, 31 bucks, 13 percent. BioRad Laboratories, 25 bucks, 7 percent. Coinbase, 15 percent, a 25 dollar move there. To the downside, Super Microcomputer off 111 bucks, that's 11 percent move. Uh, Adobe is off 23 bucks, 4 percent. Roku's down 21 percent or 21 bucks. DoorDash is down 13 at 10 percent. And AMN Healthcare is off 15 percent, that's about a 12 dollar move to the downside. So we got movers and we've got got shakers um let's do this here let's uh take a look at the uh well first let's start here with the equity futures and how they're trading in all the uh, currencies or the major currencies major currencies i'm referring to the euro the pound and the yen out there they make up 83 percent of the u.s dollar index we've got we're at new all-time highs by the way today in the es mini in terms of euros yen and pounds out there so it's not exactly like they are big into being the sellers out there so if you're thinking that we're selling off here in the u.s just remember what's your brother and sister overseas doing because they have just as much of an influence right now they're at new all-time highs if we take a look at the nq uh only new all-time highs today are in terms of british pounds and the yen out there again it's an idea it's an indication of a market that's likely just going to consolidate during an unfavorable seasonal time period which basically begins just about now we'll take a look at that if we take a look at the Dow, the Dow makes a new all-time high Dow equity future contract that is new all-time high today in euros, yen, and pounds out there. And the Dow, in terms of U.S. dollars, is the one that's trading to the uh, downside out there. So that's an important perspective to understand. The next important perspective to understand, it really was a question that came up during the week by uh, Z, John, inside the uh, Tiger's Den. I, I realize that, Al, and we'll get to that after the, uh, after the break here. So um, if we take a look at... Uh, um, uh, what was I going to do? So I'm going to switch over to our white background charts just so we can take a look at the equity markets, what their message is to you and I at this point in time or what it likely is. So we're going to get over here to this set of charts, but this not. Oh, yeah, this is the set of charts we're looking at. So, <clears throat> so there was a question about whether or not the markets or the NASDAQ specifically is in a phase transition. And one of those one of the one of the keys there is about if we are, you want to be able to buy dips, you want to be able to buy bottoming patterns and so forth. This set of charts up here, the top is the daily time frame, the bottom is the weekly time frame. Let's focus on the bottom as we speak right now. If you take a look at each of those bottom charts and you look at that oscillator and change line, you tell me where does price need to close below to suggest that maybe the phase transition is a little too early to call. 
Exactly. It's going to be that oscillator and change line. Each of them on a weekly basis is green. We can see the NQ tested and rejected it this week. So it is an all out bullish uh, mode out here. Uh, however, it could form a dark cloud cover candle this week. So we need to see it week's end. What would that do? That would generate a road's momentum indicator top. But price still has to close below that green oscillator and change line to lose its momentum and tell us that maybe there's something else that's going on. We take a look at the Dow equity future contract. That moved lower on Monday, did nothing more than just simply test and reject that green oscillator and change line. The same thing is true for the Russell 2000. The ES Mini never got down to that level, but that's really the key area. So for those of you that are more of an intermediate term uh, type trader out there, a swing type trader, uh, watch those green oscillator, watch those oscillator and change lines for their weekly time frame. There are no topping patterns. The only one that could potentially form today would be the one inside the NQ, which could generate a road's momentum indicator top. So now back to the topping, uh, not back to the topping, now back to the daily time frame charts out here. Um, you know, you've got you've got uh, you've got to break below. You've got to bust out. So the other thing that we learned this week is just how key the bottom of those daily profiles was as a support area. In one single day, that was on Monday, we had the ES Mini and the NQ get all the way down to test the bottom of those new profiles out there. So 43, I'm sorry, 49.39. There's no question that is a key level of support that must be broken in order to suggest any kind of potential change in trend. And for the NQ. That level is going to be 17.531. The uh, Dow uh, never did complete its uh, new profile out there, Dow Equity Future contract, that is. And so what we've got is the uh, Dow that is actually trading above the top of its daily profile, 38.050. So that's in a bullish mode, even though it has a road's momentum indicator top. So really, overall, it's uh, neutral. So with regard to the markets out here, longer term, Price is going to need to close below those green oscillator and change lines to tell you and I that there may be something wrong with the uh, markets and they're getting ready to move lower. And why is that important? <coughs> Hopefully the screen doesn't go black here, but if it does, we'll just move on to something else. Well, what we'll put up here is let's put up the S&P 500 and uh, see what uh, pops up first. So this red vertical line is where we're at today. This is the last 33 years is what's popping up. I don't know why it's the 33 years. Let's just go to 96 years out there. So here's our 96-year seasonal cycle, not presidential, just straight out, just all 96 years. And what this shows is that typically the S&P 500 forms a top now, but that top doesn't really give us a nice bottom until about uh, the May 24th time frame out there. Now, that's the S&P 500. And, and, well, you know what? Let's do this. If somebody might say 96 years, that's too much, Steve-O. All right, here's 25 years. <coughs> Same kind of thing. Now, in the two last 25 years, what we see is typically just simply a about a two to three to four week move to the downside. That would fit with regard to our dance steps of consecutive moves lower out there. So that's over the last 25 years. If we take a look at the last 10, last 10, you've got the same kind of a thing with the uh, bottom forming here in uh, March. Now, this last 10 years is certainly going to be influenced by that 2020 year out there. Um, so you can see that we're in that. If you, you hear people in the news media uh, talking about we're about to enter an unfavorable time period, the end of February. Well, now you can see that with your own eyes out there. When we get back to this break, we're going to go to Steve Woods, the creator of the float indicator out there, and we're going to take a look at SMCI with Steve-O. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to settle in for just a little bit. We're going to take a look at Super Microcomputer Inc. SMCI is the uh, ticker symbol. The thing has been on just a gigantic uh, roll uh, in really a short period of time, going from 37 bucks to over a thousand. Having a tough day uh, today, and uh, we're going to talk about this with the inventor of the uh, float analysis. In fact, uh, I happen to have that tool on eSignal out there. That's how much they appreciate it. So, uh, uh, welcome, Steve Woods from Maryland. Steve, uh, thanks for calling in. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Uh, Steve, I'm very good, actually. Ah, Are you there? Perfect. I am. I am. I hear you now. Okay, give good. me just a give me just a second here. What I want to do, okay. and I, because I'm going to change over to your float analysis chart in a moment. We had some other requests inside the Tigers Den as well to take a look at this. So I'm going to just review that portion of it first. Sure. Just to give you my take on what this is communicating to us off of my white background charts, which are up on the screen. Now we'll switch over to my e-signal charts, which has your indicator on there. And then I'm going to let you take it from there so you can describe to people what it is that your float analysis tool is uh, showing us and what that could mean from here. So when I take a look at these daily time frame charts out here, we don't have any – well. So there's there's certainly there's an A to B equals C D pattern to the upside that we can draw in. And you can more clearly see that when we look at the weekly time frame charts. So today it looks like we're gonna have both a key reversal bar and perhaps a bearish engulfing candle or some type of bearish reversal candle. So that would generate a sell the D point pattern. When you get a top, that says that price should move back to support. Folks, the first level of support that I have right now for SMCI would be that green oscillator and change line. And that's at eight eighteen and change out there. So let's just call it eight eighteen. What you should also notice is that there's a new profile that is attempting to form today. Now, I won't have a confirmation on this profile until Tuesday, quite frankly, because of the holiday on Monday. But this profile is forming below price, Steve. And when a profile forms below price, that's actually a bullish message out here. So what this is telling me is we're, going to, we're likely going to get a topping pattern today. It should take price back to support. The 818 area will be one level. I'm not saying price can't get back to those profile areas. I'm saying when a profile forms below price, that is a bearish signal. So it gives you and I a little bit of a competitive advantage. And when we look at the weekly and the monthly time frame charts, there's no topping pattern that I have here. So that's what I see when I take a look at the daily, the weekly, or the monthly charts out there. And now, Steve-O, what I'd like to do is I'm going to switch over. We're going to take a look at our 
black background charts. This is going to be the daily time frame that we're taking a look at. This is SMCI's chart. And the tool that I have on here, folks, this is Steve Wood's float indicator. And Steve, if you can just describe to them what's going on with regard to the upper and lower and center band that you have here. And then obviously what it is that we see today, which is a, a unique sim, uh, signal out here um, with regard to float analysis. So Steve, I'll take it on from here. Okay. Well, um, let me first start by saying, um, Steve, you're one of the best technical analysts out there. I'm, I just want to praise you and say, you know, I took your, um, your newsletter. I got so much from you that I use. And so I just want to say anybody who's listening and hasn't bought Steve's newsletter, you need to get it. I listen to you every day, Steve, and, well, and you're really you. good. Okay. Thank you. Now, I appreciate that. Um, uh, in order to understand float analysis, you got to understand the idea of adding volume up in a backwards direction. So okay. you take the volume of today and you add it to the volume of yesterday and the day before that, and you keep adding up volume until it equals the float. So what is the float? The float is the number of shares that are actually available for trading. And the idea is that when a stock is going down, at some point at the bottom, it's going to have a float turnover, which is where the smart money is buying. And at the top, you're going to have, when your stock makes a run to the to a new high uh, and turns over and rolls lower, it's going to have a turnover at the top where you can see that the um, price breaks below the float turnover. And I'm creating a rectangular box, just adding volume going backwards. And when that vol when the price breaks below that box. It should be a – initially, you want to think of it as a sell signal. Now, in this case, this is just an incredible thing because this has now got a two-day turnover. So that means if I add today's volume to yesterday's volume, I'm going to get to 47 million shares. Well, 47 million shares is the entire float in this company. So that means that this is turning over – and right now it's having a two-day float turnover. And you can see that because on Steve's chart here, you've got a two-day box. And the box okay. goes back to the low of today and the high of today. And it's, you've got a huge bearish engulfment in there. Right. Now, this particular – now, how, do, how the question is, how do we read this? Now, I'm, I'm thinking just yesterday, Bank of America uh, – let's give a little background to this company. This company makes – the servers that have a cooling system that allows uh, it's the best servers for using Nvidia's chips. Okay. When Nvidia took off last May or whenever it was, when it blasted higher, well, this thing blasted higher too, and it started. It, it had a big run, and then when Nvidia went sideways, this went sideways, and I was tracking that, and I I saw that in the sideways move. It was going through a multiple float turnover pattern, which means in the sideways move, it's turning over the float turnover over and over and over. So that what do you what do you get from that? Well, it means that traders are just buying between in the in in that trading range from the low to the high, and it's just going back and forth, back and forth. Okay. Well, then they have pre-announced on uh, you know at the bottom of the when it broke out above that, they made a pre-announcement, and. I saw that pre-announcement because it gapped like, oh, it was a huge gap from the day before. And then it just blasted through that trading range. <clears throat> I got in at 320 I got in at $320, and I've been riding this baby higher. Okay, so, so now what, what action? I've been looking for. Yeah, what action would you take today? Happen. But just yesterday, Bank of America gave initiated with a buy for a long-term hold. So the question is, is this, a, is this distribution happening up here or is this accumulation? And you're not going to know until you see the price action after this because people that are buying today could be buying to hold for a long-term. Anyway, it's, you can't really tell whether this is accumulation or distribution. If the price breaks below and starts moving lower in a big way, I'm thinking buyers are just going to come in. Anyway, what this is saying is we're, get, we're headed for a sideways move. I don't think it's just going to head right back up to the high. But it's basically you can either interpret it as its distribution, total distribution at the top, 
Or you can say, oh, there's smart money is coming in up here, and, it's, and if they hold those shares, it's going to go higher. But in any yeah. event, the float turnover is giving you a signal that this is a really important point. Wouldn't you think, though, if it's distribution, we'd be on lighter volume, not on big volume like this, which is kind of a um, sideways move? Well, yeah, and especially since it's had this huge move to the upside, because as Tom, you know, taught me, I, you know, I used to have the nine o'clock show for, yeah. a, for a while. And and I gave, you know, I went on tour with Tom and we gave workshops. And as yeah. Tom points out, you can have a normal correction and this is going to come down to 700. So, you know, it's going to have a if it has a normal correction. But that's that's if you have a normal stock. I don't think this is a normal stock. Because this is this and Nvidia are the two big leaders in AI. Yeah. And hey, Steve, we're, go, we're going to hard. Steve, we're going low. to hard break here. We're going to hard break here. You're welcome to stay on, and we can finish up when we come back. But uh, we'll be right back, folks. Steve Rhodes and Steve Woods. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey, because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're on the line with uh, Steve Woods. We're taking a look at his float indicator. That's what uh, you see up on my chart. We're taking a look at SMCI uh, out there. He just went through a nice explanation of what his take is, at least at this stage. Seems like, Steve, that R2 – and by the way, there's a bunch of sound distortion on your cell phone. So we'll just kind of wrap this up now just to so it doesn't you know bother all the listeners and so forth. But, but it sounds to me like your take – 
is that uh, this is uh, just more of a sideways-ish type consolidation. Maybe it's going to set up a retracement. My tools are saying it should set up a retracement with price pulling back into the 701 to 818-ish type area out there. So it seems like we're in sync at this stage here, but let's continue to follow it. Um, any any other piece of information that you'd like to share with the listeners? Maybe just a quick uh, what you know. The, I'm showing your chart out here. So the blue lines are those the flow channels that we see out there, the upper and the uh, lower levels of this yeah. tool. Yeah, let me let me say this. I hope my phone is now working better. I I pulled out the mic, but anyway, uh, okay. You can. I've Thank come you. up with a new way a new way to create a float chart and to think of it. And you can use channel lines. And what you do is you find the float number, which you can find over at Yahoo or sure. a number of places that have it. And then you divide the average volume in the past few days or the past month, and you'll get and you apply those to a channel uh, indicator. So you get channel lines and the channel lines then give you, you you don't get to see the box because the problem was a whole lot of platforms couldn't create the indicator. It's not an easy indicator to create because you have to, count volume up backwards and then sure. a lot of people didn't didn't make the indicator correctly so the one you're looking at doesn't really show it correctly because it won't show breakouts it it will just take the high and low lines and maintain those so when it goes above the channel line or below the channel line you don't really see that so and then the well, final you, thing could you do I'll me say, a favor okay. steve could you do me a favor could you call those sure. guys at e signal tell them to correct the formula for you I, you know, as long as it's out there, let's get yeah. it. Let's get it going. Yeah. Well, I. It, yeah. I'll well, that's something call. that's probably probably in my future. If you're asking me to do that, I will do that. Yeah. Um, but why not? What I'm saying is that anybody on most any charting package has channel lines, and you can create the channel lines yourself. With you don't even have to buy e You know, you don't have sure, to buy sure. the other fancy stuff. Right, and if right. they want to get in touch with me, I don't have a service. I'm not, you know, all I do is I trade myself here in my own home office. Yeah. People can get in touch with me at um, Float Analysis Steve, all one word, at Gmail. Float oh, Analysis Steve. I love to talk about it. And I'm going to call Tom this afternoon because today is a beautiful day on this chart. Because well, I perfect. can't tell whether this is accumulation or distribution. I'm ready for a pullback. But I mean, it's such a good price so that, you know, I'm just I, I think it's going to go a whole lot higher in the long term. So, well, perfect. Well, good to hear from you. Uh, others in the den are uh, glad to hear your voice as well. And uh, please call back in again soon. OK. OK, you be well, Steve. And thanks again for you everything. You bet. You too. That was Steve Woods uh, from Maryland. Uh, we did have the S&P just turn slightly green there for a second. We're basically flat at 5029. So uh, let's get to a couple of other requests that came in. Brent uh, wrote in earlier this morning, Brent in Martinez, California, uh, wanted to take a look at natural gas. Who doesn't? You know, we're all looking for a uh, searching for a bottom here. So if we take a look at the natural gas charts. We're going to switch over to a couple of different uh, charts out here. Here's the monthly chart. Basically, as ugly as you can get. There's no bottoming pattern or anything along those lines here. We're just in bar number six. We're in wave number five out here, letter E. No bottoming signal. The natural gas weekly chart uh, has moved lower. It's lost that road's momentum indicator signal. So there's no bottom pattern here. Looks like this thing just wants to continue to move lower. Well, the only possible saving uh, grace out here could be coming from the daily time frame chart, Brent. And that is that this will form a TD9 count. Oh, we're not seeing the chart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Got through all that. And uh, thank you, Al, for saving me. So here are those white background charts out there. So again, the monthly lower left, bar number six, bar number five on the weekly, no roads meant to indicator signal, basically looks ugly, as ugly as you can get. But the daily time frame, this is something to be paying attention to. We do have bar number nine of a TD9 count that will confirm today as long as price closes below $1.76. That's a likely outcome. Uh, so we're going to get a, well, and that pattern now will complete on I don't know if uh, natural gas futures are trading on Monday on the holiday or not, but they'll certainly be completed by Tuesday out there. Now, there's a new profile that's attempting to form for March. March contracts rolling over to April. I think it rolls over next week, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to switch over and take a look at the April contract as well. But I just want to give you a feel for what's going on here because those people want to trade the UNG. March is still in the UNG. It's about a third of the holdings upside inside UNG. The April contract is the other 75% or thereabouts. Don't quote me on the actual percentages out here. So we do have a potential bottoming pattern 
uh, for uh, natural gas. That's if we, especially if we get a, uh, what well, you know, there's an A to B equals CD to the downside. So if we got a bullish reversal candle today, that would generate both a TD9 count and a buy the D point pattern. And the reason why Brent and myself and everybody is looking at natural gas is really because of this, not this chart here. This is the S&P, but we'll switch over and we'll take a look at natural gas. And if we take a look at natural gas, we put this on the maximum data that I have, which is 33 years. And uh, what we can see is that natural gas is we're in the time period where natural gas should be forming a bottom. So on average, over a 33 year period, that bottom typically comes in right around February 20th. What's today? The 16th. So it says we should be forming a bottom today, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, something along those lines, if it's going to follow along the seasonal pattern. Natural gas has basically two months that are favorable for it. Two months. And you can see this, at least on average over the last 33 years, it's been March and April. Has that changed along the way? Well, I'm not going to go from 33 to 25. That's not going to do much. But let's take a look at 15 years out here. 15 years shows that April is a month that moves higher in July. There's not a lot of favorable seasonal time periods here for natural gas. But we're basically, or we should be, in one of them. What's natural gas do in a 33-year period? I don't know the answer to this. We're going to find out. During the presidential election cycle out there, what happens? Well, in this case here, Brent, if you were to ask that question, natural gas doesn't really bottom until March or so. So let's go with what we have right now. What we have right now is that over that average 33-year period uh, that we use out here, we're expecting or anticipating natural gas should bottom. We're getting that signal today. Now, let's switch from these charts to go over and take a look at the actual UNG, BOIL, uh, the two contracts that make up the UNG right now. Well, it turns out that natural gas for its April uh, con well, what the heck happened there? Shoot, this was supposed to be daily. Sorry, folks. Give me a second here. Not weekly. Daily. Let me just, uh, so you can see the TD9 count bottom, but I need to uh, just make sure I've got the proper template here loaded. That way we're all looking at the right data. There we go. So you can see that a TD9 count bottom is going to complete today for natural gas for the April contract that makes up about 75% of UNG out there. There's an A to B equals CD pattern here, too. we got a bullish engulfing candle. We don't have any profile issues to deal with. That could be good or bad out there. You'd love to have profile support out there, but we don't have that in the April contract. This suggests at a minimum we should see a rally up to that red oscillator and change line, about a buck seventy-six inside of natural gas. And if price can get above that, we could be looking at a move up to the 213 level. You can see on Boyle and in UNG, they both have they will both complete td9 count bottom patterns today so for those of you looking to get long natural gas you've got a pretty good signal as we speak right now and even on the 30 minute time frame this is a beautiful thing you have a negated td9 count top the so things are looking up but only time will tell steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, we had a question that came in from uh, Joe. That was uh, while we were taking a look at natural gas. Uh, Joe's uh, specific question is, do you see a bottom in natural gas for a short-term trade? If I wasn't clear, I think I was, the answer is yes. I was watching that 30-minute time frame chart. When I get done with this uh, break here, I'm going to issue a trade alert for newsletter subscribers for Mastering Probability. It's making them aware of what has transpired so far. So if you're looking for a, a bottom signal, bottom pattern, it's right here, right now. Well, you got to use stops, though. You got to use a stop. Doesn't mean that it's going to turn into a, a trade. When we look at those weekly and monthly charts. There are reasons to be cautious uh, at a minimum. All right, so let's get back to uh, these uh, requests that have come in. Seven, seven, seven. He's going to play a little black. No, not black. It was, well, his name is Jack, Black Jack. But seven, seven, seven. I'm thinking that's more of a one. Well, it could be. Yeah, it's more of a one-armed bandit, don't you think? In any event, ZTO is, let's just get to it out here. ZTO is what uh, uh, Jack would like to take a look at. So let's get that up on our screen. We've got it up on our screen, don't we? Uh, yeah, we're in the right spot. Okay, so this is ZTO Express, Cayman Inc. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Does this mean they're in the Caymans? Is that the uh, deal? We take a look at ZTO. It looks bullish to me on the daily time frame. Why does it look bullish? Formed a beautiful roads momentum indicator bottom. Price then gaps up above profile resistance. The next uh, target for uh, this, let's pull this back just a tad on the daily time frame. Next price target is its TD9 count breakdown level. And that's up at the 21-22 level. If we look at a weekly time frame, you love ZTO. Why? TD9 count bottom is going to complete this week. And it looks like price will close above that red oscillator and change line. That is a uh, signal that we should see more of a rally. That more of a rally should take us up to 2022 or 2133. So our price targets right now are 2022, 2131, and 2122. On a monthly time frame, it's a possibility that this will go ahead and generate a TD9 count bottom. This month is going to be bar number eight. We really don't know on this stage here. But what we do know is that a prior swing point, a prior swing point from October of 2022, volume there was 77 million. That's be, that was tested last month with 77 million. This month so far, we're about halfway through the month, 34 million. So it's still got kind of a volume. But nonetheless, ZTO, this is a technical call out here. It's going to rally. And that rally should take us up into that 2022 level out there. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Jack. And thanks so much for the request and your patience. We're going to go take like, a ticker symbol, WIMI out here. This is for uh, uh, Dan inside the Tigers. And this is Wimmy Hologram Cloud out there. This is only trading at about a buck. Dan thinks this might be a lottery ticket out here. So what do the patterns tell us about? The patterns tell us on a daily time frame, the only thing I can come up with as we speak right now is this thing is trading in a gigantic, did I say ginormous or I said gigantic profile. It's a bullish structured profile. And today's close above 92 cents and, and uh, Tuesday's close above 92 cents would go a long way to suggesting that price wants to make its way back to that buck 39 level. That happens to be the high, the most recent high out here, and it is the top of that uh, daily profile. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, 
Price is trained by the top of its profile. The top of its profile is 91 cents. A close above that this week is going to suggest a run back up to 117. If we're going up to 117, that gets us up towards that buck 39 level. I don't see anything negative on a Wimmy in the uh, monthly time frame. In fact, the monthly time frame looks like right now it's trading above profile. Um, the top of that profile. So you'd love to see this, Dan, is on uh, February 29th. I don't know if that's a trading day. Do we have 29 days this uh, February? 28th or 29th, whatever the last day of February is when the month actually closes, if you can get a close above 97 cents, that would add to the bullishness that you have with regard to the monthly time frame. Again, the uh, day, weekly time frame is uh, certainly bullish, as is the uh, daily right now. So uh, I hope that helped you out with regard to the profile information out there, and best of luck to you. We've got a request from Vic who wants to take a look at Coinbase out here. I believe Coinbase was out with earnings before the bell, after the bell. They're back up at their most recent highs. A close above the uh, level of... 187.39, a close above 187.39 is going to negate a weekly TD9 count top. You know what that says? That says price wants to get up to $323 eventually. Eventually, because that's a monthly time frame price target. We're trading above profile levels. It looks like this is going, it could. So it could. How are we going to get? How are we going to know if we're going to get to 3.23? The answer, my friend, comes from a monthly close, which Dan says is the 29th. Uh, that's perfect. And so that's and that uh, we're going to celebrate David White's birthday like we've never celebrated before, as that is his birthday, right? And he's he's a youngster, right? He left us way too early out there because he only got so many birthdays to celebrate. Um, how many did he get? Uh, 10, 12, 13, 14, something along those lines. So we're going to celebrate that on the 29th in honor of him. But if this can close at the 29th, if he can close above the price of 187.39, that will be its signal to you that price wants to move to that 323 level. So you've got today's price to watch. You want to see that close above the weekly TD9 count. Again, that number out there is 187.39. If you get that, that's a beautiful thing. Price is uh, taking out or trying to take out a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. The swing point out there it did volume of 17.6 million so far today. You've done 21 million shares. So price is taking that out. That could set up a pretty large A to B equals CD. We don't need to set up the A to B equals CD patterns here, do we? No, we don't because we got 323 as a uh, price target out there. So Vic, I hope that helped you out. Uh, Mimi wanted to take a look at the profile levels on ticker symbol ERF. So let's get that up on Stevie's screen out here. And ERF is what? I don't know. But we do know that today is going to become bar number eight. Now, that was not Mimi's question. Mimi's question was, this for Enter Plus Corporation, is where are the profile levels? So on a daily time frame, Mimi, the profile level was at 1605. I say was because we're trading at 1639. So it blew past that yesterday. We're trading above it today. We're trading above a green oscillator and change line. But you do have bar number eight that is forming here. This suggests that Enter Plus, even as bullish as it does look right now, it still should form a short-term top between today and Wednesday of next week. That short-term top should take us back to support. The support level or the first support level would be at 1605, the top of the daily profile. This would be the second day above that level. So it is a real change in trend breakout uh, signal here. But nonetheless, you're likely going to get a topping pattern that forms by a uh, Wednesday of next week. The weekly chart says, yeah, so what? So you're just going to get a little topping pattern, pull back and test support. Um, that's fine because I'm in a breakout mode myself. There was a new profile that formed last week. The top of that profile is 1596. Again, we're at 1640. So 1596 old resistance would really become your new support level. We don't need to know where the bottom of the center on the weekly is. With regard to the monthly time frame, uh, the monthly time frame shows that price is consolidated with inside its profile out there. And this would suggest that price might target 1714. So we got 1714 on the monthly. We have 1759 as a price target on the uh, weekly. And just be paying attention to that daily time frame out there. I'm not suggesting that you sell. I don't know if you've got a position or you don't have a position. If you do have a position and you've been holding on, well, you make the decision that's right for you. I'm sharing with you that the chart patterns weekly and monthly are saying this thing wants to continue to move higher eventually, and I think that's after a short pullback. So, Mimi, I hope that helps you out with regard to that question. I see we're going to be going to a break here in about 10 or 15 seconds. There are two requests that I have that are outstanding, uh, although I need to check the Tiger's Den, see if there was anything in there that I missed. I don't think so. So we're going to take a look at Occidental Petroleum and Devon Energy for Alton when we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFN.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at charts here for Occidental Petroleum, and uh, this is for Alton. At Alton, what I would say is in 47 cents, the uh, the uh, fasten seatbelt sign is going to be coming on, and uh, you want to be paying attention because those air masks could fall down because you're going to run into some turbulence. So you've got sellers or resistance at the 6105 level. That's on the daily time frame. That's his TD9 count breakdown resistance level. By the way, this formed a TD9 count top. It did that on the trading day of December 22nd. What did that do? That took price all the way back to its breakout level of support, and that was on January 18th. So maybe it's going to do a full trip back up, and 6105 would be that area. Not only on the daily time frame is 6105 resistance, the weekly time frame says between 6094 and 6261 it's going to get bumpy. Why? Because that's its bearish structured profile area out there. Monthly chart uh, not really providing us with a ton of information, just shows that long uh, sideways consolidation that's been in place, quite frankly, since May of 2022 out there, and that is for Occidental Patrol. Petroleum. Let's go take a look at Devon Energy. DVN is a ticker symbol out here. We take a look at DVN. You got a profile change in trend signal yesterday. You're getting confirmation of that today. This suggests a run for its breakdown level at 45.65. The weekly chart says, well, before I can get to 45.65, I've got to get back inside my profile that formed above price, which is a bearish message. Doesn't mean price can't get back in there, but that first level of resistance to the upside is not that many cents away. We're at 43.54 and 43.93 is going to be that first resistance level that you're going to face inside of Devon Energy. I'll tell you on a 65-minute time frame, Devon
open energy right now is forming bar number nine of a TD9 count. So this is suggesting that we should see some kind of uh, pullback or retracement. It may just be brief, but uh, that's what's going on on the intraday basis. Uh, to finish things off, let's go take a look at DraftKings out here. This is for Dan from New York. DraftKings looks very bullish. Why? Because yesterday it negated its TD9 count top. And today, uh, it's getting confirmation of that. We're trading above yesterday's high. Looks to me like DraftKings wants to continue to run higher. Run higher to where? Well, it's negating its monthly uh, TD9 count top. That says over time, DraftKings wants to get up to the 6458 area. Dan from New York. So I hope that that helped you out. Folks, have a fabulous weekend out there. Monday is a holiday. It's President's Day. Well, I'm not a president. But I get the day off anyways. I hope that you get the day off as well. We'll look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Take care. Be safe out there, folks.